Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. What do you know about the last days? Are you studying prophecy that you might be prepared for what is going to take place in this world? And I believe that we're not so far away from the beginning of the last days. And allow me to make you a promise, a promise that my hope is that will encourage you. And that is, if a person is prophetically illiterate, he doesn't understand, she doesn't know what God says is going to happen in the last days, then that person will not be prepared for what they're going to encounter. When I listen, as most of you know, we live in Israel. That is our home. We are citizens of the nation of Israel. And one of the things that I do each day is I listen to rabbinical lectures. And those rabbinical lectures, when they deal with the last days, and by the way, it's rare, but when they deal with the last days, this is their message. You don't have to worry about anything because there's going to be, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, there is going to be a transformation and the world that we live in, which is a world of shortage, a word, world of violence, a world of, of problems and heartaches and disease and violence and crime, all of these things in an instant are going to be given away to a utopia of a world of perfection where there'll be no more want, no more problems, and this all comes about because of Messiah's manifestation, that he is going to be manifested, and with that is going to come this transformation of the world. Now, people would like to hear that. That's great. So we're just going to press on as we're going until perfection, the kingdom, is established. The problem with that is this. It's totally unbiblical. We don't see that. When we look at prophecy, we see something very different. We see that the most difficult time ever for this world and for the Jewish people will be at the very end of this age. So they leave that out. We'll talk more about this as we press on in the book of Daniel, especially when we get to Daniel chapter 12, that final chapter of this book. But realize, when we look prophetically, when we allow the Word of God to be our guide for preparing ourselves for the end, we see whether you are part of Israel, a Jewish individual, or whether you're part of the church, or whether you are denying anything having to do with this book and the truth. Maybe you are an atheist, maybe you belong to some other religion, like Islam or Buddhism, or Hindu, or whatever. If you are not studying the Scriptures, I'm speaking about the Bible, both the Old and the New Testament, the Tanakh and the Brit HaChadashah, if you're not in this book, you will be very unprepared for what's going to happen, and you will not be able to give a testimony pleasing to God. So here's the question. Do you want to have a testimony that's pleasing to Him? Do you want to be found faithful, doing the right things, praying the right things, so that when these things begin to happen that the prophets say must take place, what Yeshua says has to come about? Are you going to be aware of these things? Are you going to be able to identify them when they're taking place so that you can respond with faith being empowered by God. Let me get ahead of myself, but in another several weeks, we are going to be in Daniel chapter 10. I'll say this then, what I'm going to say now. 
And Daniel, this 10th chapter, is a chapter where Daniel is overwhelmed. He is weakened. He cannot even stand on his feet. He can't even stay awake because when he gets a glimpse of the last days, he is overcome just by this vision, let alone someone living in the midst of it. And what's that message? Well, the message that we're going to see in Daniel chapter 10 is this. Without prayer, we will fail. I want to say that again. Without praying properly, praying prophetically, without understanding what's going to happen in the last days, and praying that you might be able to endure these things, you are going to fail God. You are not going to give a proper testimony to your Lord and your Savior, Messiah Yeshua. So it is vital that we understand what's going to happen in the last days. Well, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Daniel and Daniel chapter 7. We want to finish up this seventh chapter today. Daniel and chapter 7. Look at what it says here. We're going to begin where we left off last week in verse 21. We read here. And I saw, Daniel was looking at this vision, and behold, he saw a horn. And what did that horn do? As we talked about, made war with the saints and overcame them. And this is important because we need to realize that we're called to be faithful. We're called to worship God in spite of anything that we might experience. Our worship of God is not dependent upon things are going well in my life. That God, that he helps me achieve what I want to achieve, so I give him praise. No. God is worthy in spite of what may be taking place in one's life. Whether they are suffering or not, whether they have or they have not, God is still worthy to be praised. And unless we understand that, we are not going to be worshiping him in the last days because of the things that we are going through. And without worship, well, we won't have the insight, the illumination, the equipping, the empowerment that we need in order to walk faithfully. Look now to verse 22. And the Ancient of Days came and he judged, meaning this, he vindicated the saints of the Most High. And we read here, the time came when the saints, they were strengthened or possessed. Now, some will say they possessed the kingdom, but it's really the word for being empowered in the kingdom. And that's the key. Now, one rabbi in translating this, as I was reading, talked about it and translated it perfectly, being empowered in the kingdom. And what did he say? He said, that it's only when we are living in a kingdom expectation in the character under the laws of the kingdom can we expect this empowerment to be ours in this age leading up into the establishment of the kingdom and i believe that wholeheartedly now verse 23 and thus he said to me this fourth beast is the fourth kingdom that will be in the earth now, this is important because this fourth one is going to be the fourth one in the earth, but here's the key. It is going to be over the earth, meaning it is going to be global in nature. It is going to rule over all people. And if you have any doubt of that, just look sometime in the book of Revelation. It is clear in that 13th chapter that this final empire is a global empire. Once more. Verse 23, and thus he said to me, the fourth beast is a kingdom, the fourth kingdom, and it will be in the earth. And notice what it says. It's different from all the kingdoms. Why? The answer is, and we'll see this later on, it is satanic in nature. Now, other empires, in fact, all of them, they were evil. They were in opposition to the things of God. And certainly Satan had his hand in those empires, whether we're talking about Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, 
all of them had a satanic character. But this last one, what we're calling here the fourth one from Daniel's perspective, this is unique. And the ways and why it's unique is that it is going to be led by the Antichrist, which is kind of like a incarnate Satan. In the same way that the true Christ, Messiah Yeshua, that is Jesus of Nazareth, he is God with us. We speak about the incarnation, meaning God becoming flesh. In that same way, in a distorted manner, we see the Antichrist is Satan in the flesh. And therefore, that last empire is going to be unique. It is going to be, be evil like no other empire. And it's going to possess a demonic force that's going to allow to do signs and wonders that is for the purpose of deceiving. Unless someone is prepared for that and knows these things, the scripture says that this one is going to be easily turned aside. So look again, verse 23. And thus he said to me, this fourth beast is the fourth kingdom that will be in the earth. It's different from all the rest and it will devour all the earth. Another clear meaning that it's going to be a worldwide empire and it's going to tread down and it's going to, to basically destroy it, meaning it's going to what? Well, notice what it says. It is going to tread down and destroy it, meaning the earth. Verse 24, and the 10 horns from this kingdom it will rise up 10 kingdoms or 10 kings. So this empire is going to be comprised of 10 kingdoms with 10 kings. That's what we're told in the book of Revelation and the basis of that is right here. And again, we talked about this last week. The number 10 is the number for completion or entirety. Now, some teach wrongly that the number seven is completion. It is not. Their basis for that is found in the book of Genesis, and it's a, a good rationale. It says that God completed his work on the seventh day. So they see seven and completion, and I understand that. But when you look at that same scripture, it tells us that he sanctified, which means he made holy the seventh day. And when you encounter more and more places where the number seven appears, you will find that it has more to do with holiness, with sanctification, with the purposes of God. Whereby the number 10, when we look at it, it has the idea of completion or that which is in its entirety. So what the scripture is doing here is this fourth empire, a global empire, all over all the nations of the earth, but it's comprised, as we see here, of ten kingdoms. And it says, and a king, another king, will rise up after them. Meaning that this ten nation confederacy is going to be established, and then the horn, that antichrist, is going to rise up from that, and as we've told, it's going to take three of these away, meaning it's going to have the number seven giving a false holiness, a counterfeit holiness. Look now to, to the end of verse 23, 24, it says, And it will, he will be different from those preceded him, and he will cause to fall three kings, just what we talked about, three of the kingdoms. Now verse 25. And he spoke things against the Most High. There's the character. This is what we need to see. It's a great example of progressive revelation. We're told earlier that he speaks simply, Dvarim Gedulim, great things. But now we're told specifically, when we look at it carefully, he speaks these things against the Most High, and notice what else, and he afflicts the saints of the Most High, meaning the Most High Saints. Verse 25, second half. And he will desire, meaning he will consider to try to change the times and judgment, that is, he wants to change the calendar. Why? 
Well, when we look at the biblical calendar, we see what is emphasized are these appointed days. And the word here is Moedim, these appointed times. He doesn't want them. So he wants to change, get rid of the biblical festivals. Why is that? Because these biblical festivals are festivals of revelation. Through these holidays, and that's why it's so important that we acknowledge them. I want to deal with a side issue. Many times people write and say, do you keep the biblical festivals? And I write back this way. You cannot keep them or observe them in the Torah sense. Why is that? Because we have no temple today. There's no altar. We can't do the things that the law says to do for these festivals. And because of the sufficiency of the work of Messiah, we don't need to bring forth these offerings anymore. Now, does that mean, as many teach, that they lose their significance? No, it does not. Here's a wise thing to do. It is wise for you to pay attention to the calendar that the Scripture gives to us. And when these festivals happen, that you study them, you read in the Scripture, what is Passover? When Passover occurs and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you study this. Likewise, when Pentecost or Shavuot or the Fall Festivals or Hanukkah, all of these festivals that are found in the Scripture, they are instruments of revelation. And we should study them, and it's very interesting. If we look at the text properly, look again to the middle of verse 25. Speaking of the Antichrist, what will he do? He will consider to change the Moedim and also the law. And they, it says, will be given into his hand for a times and a time. So one time is a year. Times in the plural is two years and a half time. So three and a half years. So he's going to, and realize what the scripture is saying. We know, and we'll come to this when we get to the end of Daniel chapter 9, but we're going to see that there's Daniel's 70 weeks, and more precise, we're going to focus in on Daniel's 70th week, that last week. And in that last week, the Antichrist is going to be ruling. But he's not going to make all of these changes just abruptly. It's going to take time. And we find that three and a half years, this is when he's going to be able to, almost without any type of opposition from God, he is going to be able to rule. Now, there will be limitations, but he is going to be, for the most part, free to do what he wants to do for these three and a half years. Now, the second half of those seven years, the last three and a half years, we are going to see that God's judgment is going to be poured out on this world and he is going to be slowly defeating the enemy until ultimately Messiah returns and clearly defeats this Antichrist and his evil empire. But he's going to have full reign for three and a half years. Look at verse 26. And the house of judgment will be seated. This is what we're told about earlier, twice in this book of Daniel in chapter 17. That, that God, he's going to allow him to do, that is the Antichrist. He is going to allow him to carry on to a point, and then God is going to take his judgment seat. And with that judgment seat is going to come his consuming judgment. Look again at verse 26. And a judgment seat was seated and his kingdom will be removed meaning the kingdom of the Antichrist will be removed from him it will be destroyed and he will perish forever and ever and what's going to happen after that verse 27 and then the kingdom and the regime of of great things the kingdom is going to be placed over all the heavens and given to the people of the saints of the Most High. So what is God saying here? 
he's saying that this evil empire is going to continue for a while and then he's going to judge and the outcome of his judgment and this is a biblical principle that we've talked about often at the outcome of his judgment will be the establishment of his kingdom now if we're not aware of that and if we're not prepared for that then we're not going to be praying properly we're not going to have the insight we're not going to have the equipping of the holy spirit and we're not going to be found faithful now does that mean believers are going to go through this entire seven year period it does not we will only be here in this world until the wrath of god begins we need to remember a very important passage of scripture first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9 where it says that god has not appointed us meaning believers for wrath but to obtain salvation so when god's wrath begins during this last seven years this final week of daniel's prophecy i'm speaking about daniel chapter 9 that prophecy we will not be here when that wrath begins messiah will come and gather us up and take us into the kingdom of heaven look again verse 27 and the kingdoms and the rules of greatness and the kingdoms under all of heavens it will be given this is the proper way to say it it will be given to the people of the saints of the most high so all of these rules, governments, whatever, are going to be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. And its kingdom shall be a kingdom forever. And all governments will worship and listen or obey Him. So He is going to bring all things, and this one here that's spoken of at the end of verse 27 is Messiah. Look again, verse 27. And the kingdoms and the governments and the great things of the kingdoms of this world, all under the heavens, they are going to be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. And His kingdom will be a kingdom forever. And all governments will worship and obey Him, meaning Messiah. Verse 28. Unto now this is the end of the matter. And I, Daniel, it says... As I was thinking, I was greatly disturbed. Why? Because of these hard things that Daniel knows that his people are going to have to go through. And when I say his people, I'm speaking of both believers, those who had that same faith that Daniel had, and those who were physically connected to Daniel. And I'm talking about Israel, the Jewish people. So when he saw all the suffering, the pain, the persecution, all these horrible things that are going to happen in the last days, it makes sense. As he was considering these things, he was greatly disturbed. And the appearance of his face changed. And it says, this thing was in his heart and he kept it. Meaning this, that last part of chapter 7, that last sentence of verse 28 is so important because it tells us something. That Daniel, he kept these things in his heart. What does that mean? Well, let me ask you a question. What does one do with his heart? The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart. So Daniel kept these things in his heart, meaning he thought about them continuously. They were foundational. And why is that? A message for us because we need to constantly be keeping these same things about the last days in our heart and here's the practical takeaway for us if you are not interested in the last days if prophecy is not important to you and you never deal with prophecy you don't deal with books and things dealing with the last days and you don't really think about what's going to be the things that are taking place before the kingdom of God is established well you're not thinking properly and you're not going to be preparing yourself for what you may encounter in this transition from this age into the kingdom of God Messiah spoke so frequently about the kingdom of God 
And if you are the mindset, well, you know, because I'm a believer, I'll be there. Well, that's true. But don't you want to be a believer that is pleasing to God? Don't you want to be someone? Now, what God says are important to him, don't you want these things to be important to you? And Daniel, Daniel was a man, remember what his name means, God is my judge. Don't you want to live, behave, pray in a way that demonstrates that you recognize that God is your judge and that you want to be pleasing to him and obedient to his call upon your life? Messiah spoke so much about the kingdom of God and the reason for that was to tell us that the establishment of the kingdom of God was vital that we would be ready for it spiritually in every sense of being ready spiritually not just having been saved by God's grace that's wonderful and that's important and that's beginning but also being found faithful up until the kingdom comes or until God takes you from your physical life into the heavens so be ready for these things God's Word is very clear about it the sad thing is is that most people don't go through this book carefully they don't study prophecy and therefore when they come to the New Testament and they see prophetic passages and there are many prophetic passages in the New Testament they're not equipped because they don't know the Old Testament they don't know what the Old Testament prophet said and therefore they cannot have the foundation for understanding New Testament prophecy we see for example when we study the book of Revelation that that it's so much derived from Old Testament prophecy and that's why people say it's hard it's confusing it's just so symbolic and they don't deal with it no God has given us scripture that the man of God that the woman of God might be ready for what God is calling us to do so do not ignore prophecy do not believe well I'm a believer therefore in the end everything's going to be okay for me realize the importance of being found faithful walking in obedience especially if you and I are going to be alive in the last days and by the way there are prophetic indicators that we're not that far away from these things beginning well with that said I'll wrap up until next week when we press on into a new chapter Daniel chapter 8 well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.